Hi, and welcome to another video editing tutorial. This is Carrie with Multicopter Warehouse and the DJI Authorized Retail Store in Lone Tree, Colorado. And today we're going to take a look at DaVinci Resolve 14 and different ways of controlling speed of clips. So this should be fun. I've got a number of different clips here from taken from a skate park with a Mavic. So we should be able to have some fun with some of these. First thing, I'm just going to grab them all and drag them to my media pool. Let that populate there. So I've got all my clips here. Now you can see these are a little washed out, and that's because I was using some different color profile settings. I believe this was all done in D-Log. So that's how we will try and edit them. And now that I'm going over to my Edit tab, now I can start going through and doing some selects on this stuff and see if I can find some clips that I really like. I can scrub through. Let's see if we can find some of the action clips here. Okay, there's a nice long clip there. Let's see what else we can find. Okay, there's Chris almost biffing it. And let's see what else we can find here. Oh, this will be a good one. So we have him going up the ramp. Okay, so let's start from about here. I'm going to hit I for my endpoint. Just scrub through it and hit O for my out point there. And I'll just drag this down to my timeline. Let's expand or zoom in here so we can kind of see what we're working with. Now, first thing I'm going to do is just put a little color grade on it so it looks pretty good. I'll choose a 3D LUT here. Uh, let's try that. Yeah, that's pretty good. Show scopes. And I'm just doing some really quick adjustments so that the footage looks halfway decent. Okay, we're going to go back to our edit tab. And now we're going to play with speed controls. Uh, there's a number of different ways to manage the speed of the clips. First off, we can just right on the clip and go to um, change clip speed. So I can just give it a percentage and I can mouse over that and scroll it left and right. <clears throat> How many frames per second I want or what the duration is I want. If I select ripple, it will adjust the that sequence and then move sequences on the other side to come in. I don't have any other ones right now to show that. Freeze frame will just freeze that whatever frame I'm on and only display that. And I can maintain uh, timing or stretch it to fit. Now that this is great, I kind of have to know what I want. Now what I can do is adjust the duration if I know how uh, far I want that to be, but Again, you kind of have to know in advance where you're going with it. Now I can go over back here and go to Retime Controls, which is Command R or Option R on Windows. And now I just get this bar up here and I can grab the top of this and roll it in or back. So if I'm slowing it down, you'll see those yellow dots get further apart. If I'm speeding it up, you'll see the, the blue arrows that get closer together. Or I can click on this little arrow down here and say change speed and just select a preset like 400%. And there we go, 400%. Now, often I don't want just something like that. I want to mix speeds. I want it ease in and ease out of different speeds. So I'm going to turn off those retime controls. I'm going to right click on it and go to retime curve. Now this is the frame from beginning to end. I'm going to actually turn that off by clicking on that arrow here. Go to retime speed and I'm going to turn off retime frame. Now I have the speed timeline here and I can just grab it and make the whole thing faster or make the whole thing slower. But what I want to do is something a little bit different. I'm going to scrub this in here. 
and I want that section to be kind of slow. So where he starts coming down, I want to pick the speed back up. So I'm going to hit Alt or Option and create a marker there. Now we're going to have a lot more fun with the markers here in just a minute, but I'm just going to kind of adjust stuff on the fly here. Now as he hits the ramp, I'm going to put another marker there. And he's going to do his flip. And then as soon as he hits the bottom there, right about there, then I'm going to go back to normal speed. So I'm going to have these three different speed transitions in here. So first off, we're going to slow down this first part of it. And we're going to slow down the second part of it even more. Let me zoom out a little bit so we can kind of see what this is looking at. Okay, so here we have it going slow, going to normal speed, slowing down, and going back to normal speed. So let's see what that looks like. So kind of a cool uh, speed transition there, but we can definitely make it nicer. Now one thing, because this wasn't shot at a faster frame rate, when I'm trying to slow it down, I'm going to get some choppy effect to it. So with that clip selected, I'm going to come over here to the inspector and I'm going to come down to retime and framing and I'm going to change my retime to optical flow. And now this is going to help create in between frames that should make the footage look better. Now we're not going to really see this effect unless we render this footage. So just to show you what it's going to look like, I'm going to go up here to Playback, Render Cache, and set to Smart. And now it's going to render this clip. <laughs> Once the whole clip is changed to blue, it's rendered and it's ready for playback. Then we can see the effect of the retiming process. So it should only take a moment here, although my project settings were that I want to change that to optical flow and let's let it render for a moment see it doesn't take too long this is on a 5k iMac from a couple years ago it's still got very decent performance with DaVinci Resolve all right it's done rendering so now you can see how much smoother that slow motion is when it's set to optical flow and he goes up the ramp and back down. So sometimes you'll have movement that doesn't look quite right with optical flow, but it's uh, not too shabby here. But the big problem here is we just go from this slow motion straight to the normal speed. I want to smooth that in a little bit. So I'm going to click on each of these markers here. And instead of going from a line, I'm going to go to a Bezier curve. And I'm going to do the same over here. So now we're going to let it re-render again. And we'll get even smoother playback. All right, let's see how this looks now. So you can see how much better it transitions in and out of the fast and slow motion. So those are the, the basic ways of dealing with speed controls. Now, I have some footage. Let me and get to my metadata over here and I'm going to just bounce through some of this footage here real fast see if I can find the uh, clips that were actually filmed faster okay so now here's a clip that I filmed at 96 frames per second with the Mavic so I'm just gonna go ahead and delete this one from the timeline let's find the start and end points in here now the beauty of filming at a faster frame rate is it gives you a lot more data to work with. So when you go to slow it down, you don't have to rely on things like optical flow to kind of smooth it out. Because you saw in that last one, as that background moved, it caused a small problem. So I'm going to go ahead and drop this onto the timeline. We'll just go ahead and play it. And because there's more data, 96 frames per second playing back at 24 
it's naturally slower. So what we'll do is we'll speed it up on the spots that we want to be normal speed and then leave the uh, slow motion where it is. So again, I'm going to go to the retime curve, turn off the retime frame, turn on the retime speed. All right, now we're ready to get to going here. So I'm going to go in right to where the front tire touches. Again, I'm going to Alt or Option click to create that mark point. And then when he lands, we'll go ahead and get that there. Now, 96 by, you know, to get back to 30 frames per second, it's going to be about, uh, you know, 300%. So let's go ahead and speed these sections up to about 300%. And we'll see how that looks. I'm going to change that so we can see. All right. So here we are, slow motion and back to fast motion. Great, we'll do the same over here. We'll take that up to about 300%. Let that render that little piece right there so we get a good playback. All right, here we go. Nice, good smooth motion, and then back down. So again, let's do what we did before. We'll change these to Bezier curves. And now we can see where we want that slow to occur. And I'm actually going to slow it down even more and adjust where it kicks in. And then you can grab these endpoints and smooth it out more, make it transition quicker, or however you want that to look. So now we've got slower slow motion, but uh, we got the regular motion there. So now look how smooth that looks. So if you're going to, if you know in advance you're going to use something in slow motion, set it to a higher frame rate so you have more data to work with and you'll get better results. Because when things work right, they really look cool. So, I mean, I love the look of that. So those are the different ways of managing speed controls in DaVinci Resolve 14. Thanks for watching. We will catch you next time. Bye-bye.